in the 60s, life changed immensely. And I think it changed in many different ways. First of all, many of us got politically passionately involved at the time of Kennedy and we saw the possibilities of a new era and the things that we believed in, many of us were liberals, uh, possibly coming to pass. And then the assassin assassination of Kennedy uh, and the Vietnam War shattered many of those illusions and I think made us all a lot more cynical. And then the 60s were kind of a jolt. Really our lives in the real world began in the 60s. I felt more at home than I had mm -hmm. ever before. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt that it was a form of recognition rather than a form of, of transformation. It made me very optimistic. Mm -hmm. The 60s were the liberating time. That was well, happening. I felt very comfortable in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Did you find that the 60s changed you a lot? No. Uh, I felt more that in the, that the 60s were something with which I had more natural sympathy. Mm -hmm. I think I've been waiting for the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think of the 60s, and of course, all the political turmoil, I never even got my head above water because I had three children, 18 and 22 months apart. And I just remember the 60s, and I think the, all the protests just went over my head. I was thinking, lucky to survive, I was so tired. So I often think about that, that here we live through these, you know, very interesting decades, and I never... Um, never were a participant. No, and I don't think I would have been. I'm, mm -hmm. I've always been, you know, more middle of the road and not rock the boat. I probably, although I'd have gone to um, some pro-choice. Did, did the 60s affect you? It really didn't. The 60s were when our three children were born. Mm -hmm. And I was, and besides having the three children and just being so involved in school, mm -hmm. we were settled enough, so the whole idea really wasn't part of my life. Did you change it all in the 60s when, when you know, things sort of opened up and... Well, not really, because I was living in California in this little town. I mean, the 60s passed me by. Oh. I mean, you know, that, that, uh, they might as well not have happened. Mm -hmm. They didn't happen in Sonora, California, put it that way. Uh -huh. so we did have a visitation from the Hells Angels one day that disrupted the entire town. I shared pot with people mm -hmm. in the 60s a couple of times, uh, but it made me terribly hungry for mm -hmm. pot then. And uh, I never really got into it enough, I think, to have uh, the pleasure of it. Mm -hmm. I must say, I tried a little marijuana, which did absolutely nothing for me. Also, we didn't have drugs. Very, very programmed, very routine, very... Yeah. Now, I was offered it once at a party, but I was afraid to take it only because... I was offered it too, and I was afraid of it. Yeah. I was afraid of becoming addicted. Really, with my fibromyalgia, it is the only thing that gets rid of my pain and mm. helps me to sleep. Mm. I was in Amsterdam, um, somehow. I, I better not say any of this. Yeah, I'll get myself. No, you won't. <laughs> you get, well, get you arrested, Donnie. Well, uh, I think no, definitely there is a definite no. use for it, and it is so ridiculous because it's not half as harmful as alcohol or as cigarettes, you know, nicotine and all the garbage. That's, so, anyway. Mm. <laughs> and then the women's movement began getting going, and by 1968 and beyond, uh, we began to wake up, and for myself, I can say that it was a big wake-up call.